Congratulations on the purchase of your new Tenant Model 5700 walk-behind scrubber. Not only will this machine perform well the day you get it, but for a long time thereafter. To ensure continued peak performance, it is important to make the necessary adjustments, regularly inspect and change normal wear items, operate and clean the machine properly. Doing so, you get greater life out of the machine and be completely satisfied with its performance. You should read the operator's manual to become more familiar with the operation of the machine. In this training program, we'll discuss the proper care and operation of the Tenant Model 5700 and 5700 XP and XPS walk-behind scrubber. The first thing covered will be a brief description of how the machine works. Water and detergent located in the solution tank flow to the floor through a solution valve to the scrub brushes. The brushes scrub the floor as the machine is propelled forward. The squeegee removes the dirty solution off of the floor and it is drawn into the recovery tank through the vacuum hose. The steering handles control the direction and speed of the machine in forward or reverse. By twisting the steering handles forward, the machine propels forward up to 3 miles per hour. By twisting the steering handles backward, the machine propels up to 1.5 miles per hour in reverse. Now we will identify some of the components of the models 5700, 5700 XP, and 5700 XPS power scrubbers. There are two types of control consoles available. The standard model 5700 console and the 5700 XP or XPS console. We will describe each console in detail later in this program. Other major machine components include the solution tank on top of the machine with a solution fill opening in the top center of the tank. The solution tank support arm holds the tank in the raised position. The recovery tank and batteries are located under the solution tank. The safety stop arm allows for air circulation when the batteries are being charged. The squeegee assembly is on the lower rear of the machine. This machine can be adapted to many scrubbing situations by changing the scrub head type to either the disc style or the cylindrical style head. Each scrub head type is available in three widths, 28 inch, 32 inch, and 36 inch. The squeegee assembly is also available in these three widths to allow for proper water pickup. The machine can easily be adapted to meet your specific needs. An additional parking brake can be added if desired. The squeegee lift lower lever on the rear of the machine is conveniently placed for complete control by the operator. Recovery and solution tank drain hoses allow the operator to control the machine draining process. The scrubbing solution flow rate is controlled by the flow lever on the left side of the control console. To increase the flow rate, push the lever forward. To reduce the flow rate, pull the lever backward. Some of the optional equipment available include the extended scrub or ES system and a power wand which allows you to scrub those hard to reach areas. The optional power wand pump switch is located under the solution flow rate lever. To turn on the power wand pump, press the top of the switch. To turn it off, press the bottom of the switch. The power wand switch should remain in the off position unless the power wand is in use. The control console is adjustable for operator comfort. To change the height of the console, pull up on the height adjustment latch, move the console up or down to the desired height, and push down on the latch to lock the console in that position. To control the propelling speed of the machine, twist the steering handles forward slowly to propel forward at the desired speed and backward to control the reverse speed. To stop the machine, release the steering handle and the speed control will return to neutral. To turn the machine, push lightly on the steering handles. To operate the standard model 5700, you must first understand the control console components. The console consists of a light that indicates when the recovery tank is full. When the light comes on, the vacuum fan automatically turns off to prevent the overfilling of the recovery tank. If the machine is equipped with the ES system, the system control switch is located below the recovery tank full indicator light. To operate the ES switch, press the top of the switch to turn it on, and the bottom to turn it off. 
If you do not want to use the ES system, leave the switch in the off position. To the right of the ES switch is the battery discharge indicator that monitors the battery charge levels so the operator can tell when recharging the batteries is required. The machine should be placed on the charger when the discharge indicator's needle is in the red zone. To the right of the battery discharge indicator is the brush pressure gauge. This indicates how hard the brush drive motors are working. The brush pressure is controlled by the operator pressing the scrub brush switch located to the right of this gauge. To increase the brush pressure, press the top of the scrub brush switch. To decrease the brush pressure, press the bottom of the switch. While adjusting the brush pressure, monitor the gauge and keep the gauge needle in the middle of the green zone. There is also an indicator light above the brush pressure switch that shows when the brushes are on. When you are through scrubbing, the bottom of the brush pressure switch should be pressed until this indicator light goes out. With the standard 5700 machine, you must lower the squeegee handle to turn on the vacuum fan. To operate the model's 5700 XP or XPS with power steering, you must first understand the control console features. If you raise the cover on the top of the console, you'll expose a row of touch switches. On the far left is the machine speed switch, which lets you preset the maximum propelling speeds. There are three speed settings available. To preset the maximum speed, you press the touch switch and monitor the indicator lights below the switch. The leftmost light indicates the machine is set to the slowest speed. The middle light indicates a slightly faster speed setting. These two speeds should be used when scrubbing. The far right light indicates the machine is set to the top propelling speed for transporting the machine long distances. If the switch is pressed again, the speed preset returns to the slowest setting. To the right of the speed preset switch is the vacuum and squeegee switch. This touch switch controls the squeegee position and the vacuum fan. When the switch is pressed, the vacuum fan turns on and the squeegee lowers if the squeegee lift lower handle has been taken out of the transport position. The indicator light below the switch shows when the switch is in the on position. This switch allows you to run the vacuum fan and lower the squeegee without using the scrub brushes. To the right of the vacuum and squeegee switch is the scrub brush pressure preset switch. This switch operates like the speed switch. When the touch switch is pressed, the brush pressure changes and the indicator lights below the switch show the setting chosen. The leftmost light indicates the least brush pressure setting and the right light indicates the heaviest brush pressure setting. Once the presettings are chosen, the switch cover can be lowered to cover the top row of switches. The second row consists of an ES system switch on the left and an indicator light that shows when the ES system is on. To the right is a recovery tank full light that indicates when the recovery tank is full and should be drained. To the right of the recovery tank full light is the scrub touch switch. This switch turns on the scrub system. When the switch is pressed, the indicator light below the switch shows that the scrub system will operate when the machine is propelled forward. On the XP and XPS machines, the battery discharge indicator is located to the left side of the control console next to the power wand pump switch. This gauge operates like a fuel gauge. When the batteries are 80% discharged, the remaining lights will start to flash, indicating that the machine must be placed on the charger. To the right of the control console is the power switch. To turn on the power, you turn the switch to the right. To turn off the power, turn the switch to the left. Next to the power switch is the hour meter, which indicates how long the machine has been operated. In the center of the control console is the optional power kill switch. By pressing the kill switch, the power to the entire machine can be disconnected in the case of an emergency. To reset the power kill switch, you must turn the switch knob in the direction of the arrows as shown. On each side of the control console are circuit breakers. They are resettable electrical circuit protection devices. They stop the flow of current in the event of a circuit overload. Once a circuit breaker has been given time to cool down, it can be reset manually by pressing the center of the breaker. Once reset, if the circuit breaker trips again, 
the overload is still present and should be brought to the attention of qualified service personnel. On the lower left rear of the machine is the optional parking brake. The brake is set by pressing the pedal down with your foot. The brake is released by raising the release lever above the pedal. There are a few checks that must be made to confirm the machine is ready for operation. By performing these checks, you will get longer life and better performance out of your machine. You will need to check under the machine for leaks. Check the scrub head skirt for rips, tears, or other damage. Wipe off the optical level sensors in the recovery tank with a cloth. If the machine is equipped with the ES system, clean the ES pump filter located in the recovery tank. Check the seals for the recovery tank openings. Remove and clean the vacuum fan screen to ensure full vacuum airflow. Inspect the squeegee blades for damage or wear. Always check the vacuum holes for damage. To remove the squeegee system for service or cleaning, remove the vacuum holes from the squeegee assembly. Loosen the two mounting nuts on either side of the vacuum hose tube. Lift the squeegee frame off of the mounting assembly. To reinstall the squeegee assembly, reverse these steps. To adjust the squeegee system, you need to know where the adjustment controls are and what they do. The squeegee down pressure cams adjust the squeegee deflection along the entire length of the squeegee. To decrease the deflection, turn the cams counterclockwise. To increase the deflection, turn the cams clockwise. The squeegee leveling knob adjusts the deflection at the ends of the squeegee. To increase the tip deflection, turn the leveling knob counterclockwise. To decrease the tip deflection, turn the leveling knob clockwise. If the machine is equipped with the optional power wand, check the pump for damage. To remove the disc type scrub brushes for inspection or replacement, swing the excess cover open. While supporting the brush from the underneath position, squeeze the spring clips and lower the brush out of the scrub head. To reinstall the brushes, reverse these steps. To remove the cylindrical type brushes for inspection or replacement, press the retainer spring down to release the idler hub. Remove the hub from the scrub head and pull the brush out of the opening. Reinstall the brush by reversing these steps. If the machine is equipped with the optional ES system, and the system will be used, you must fill the recovery tank first. To fill the recovery tank, lift the solution tank and secure with the support arm. Fill the recovery tank with enough water to cover the ES filter. Once the machine is filled and the area is clean of large debris, pieces of wire, string, and twine, you are ready to scrub the floor. To start scrubbing using the standard 5700 machine. Turn on the machine power switch, lower the squeegee to the floor. If the machine is equipped with an ES system, press the top of the ES switch to activate the system. Press the top of the scrub brush switch until the scrub brush down light comes on and the desired brush pressure is observed on the pressure gauge. 
adjust the solution flow and drive the machine forward at a slow walk speed. If it is necessary to back up the machine, raise the squeegee with the squeegee lever and drive the machine in reverse. Then release the handle and continue to scrub forward. To stop scrubbing, pull the solution flow rate handle back, press the bottom of the brush switch until the light goes out. Press the bottom of the ES switch to turn it off. Raise the squeegee system with the handle and turn off the power switch. To start scrubbing using the model 5700 XP or XPS, turn on the power switch, lower the squeegee handle, set the scrubbing propel speed, set the desired scrub brush pressure, press the scrub switch on the touch panel, set the desired solution flow rate, and propel forward. The scrub head will lower to the preset brush pressure level, the squeegee will lower, and the solution will flow. If it is necessary to back up the machine, twist the steering handles backwards, and the squeegee system will automatically raise. When the machine is propelled forward again, the squeegee system will lower back to the working position. To stop scrubbing, press the scrub switch, pull the solution flow rate lever back, raise the squeegee handle, and turn off the power switch. Note, with all of the Model 5700 machines, the scrub brushes and the solution flow will stop when the machine is not being propelled. Each time you are finished scrubbing, the machine should be thoroughly cleaned. To do so, remove the recovery tank drain hose from the mounting clip and remove the hose plug. Slowly lower the drain hose to the floor drain. If the ES system was used, it will be necessary to drain the solution tank as well. To do so, remove the solution tank drain hose from the mounting clip and remove the hose plug. Slowly lower the hose to the floor drain. Flush out the solution tank with clean water. Raise the solution tank and secure the support arm to gain access to the recovery tank for cleaning. Flush the recovery tank well with water. Clean the ES filter. Wipe off the optical sensors with a cloth. Remove and clean the vacuum fan screen. And reinstall the screen. Pull up on the solution tank support arm and lower the tank to the safety stop. Push the safety stop in to lower the solution tank completely. If the machine is equipped with the cylindrical scrub head, the debris trough must be removed from the left side of the machine and cleaned. After the machine is cleaned, it should be checked over to determine if anything will need attention before the next scrubbing session. As mentioned earlier, by performing these checks you will get longer life out of your machine and be more satisfied with its performance. Check the battery discharge indicator to determine if the batteries need to be placed on the charger. Inspect the squeegee blades for wear or damage. Check the vacuum hoses for obstructions. Remove any wire, string, or twine wrapped around the scrub brushes. Check the battery full levels. Place the machine on the charger if required. It is important to note that the charger will not turn on if the machine power switch is on. The switch must be in the off position. 
To install and use the optional power one system, remove the squeegee suction hose from the top of the squeegee frame and connect the power one vacuum hose to the squeegee suction hose using the adapter. Connect the other end of the power wand vacuum hose and solution hose to the power wand handle. The solution hose is stored in the solution tank and has a quick coupling to make connecting it to the power wand easy. Once the hoses are connected to the power wand, the power wand pump switch is turned on by pressing the top of the switch. The power wand has a brush and a squeegee system on the head of the wand. Scrub the floor with the brush and flip the power wand head over to recover the solution with the squeegee. This concludes the operating training program for the Model 5700 family of machines.